Let's get started. Um, so, welcome everyone. My name is Fred. I'm the team lead of the release engineering team at the Eclipse Foundation. And in this talk, we're going to see how we, uh, as the Eclipse Foundation, as the relink team, help to keep the build green for all our uh, Eclipse projects and help them to build impressive, impressive software every day. So, the agenda, uh, I'm going to talk about CBI for those that don't, don't know, just give a short introduction. I'm giving an overview of our infrastructure and what's new, what's going on, and what will come in the future. So, first of all, who of, know, who of you does or has, hasn't heard the term CBI before? Okay, that's good. So, CBI stands for Common Build Infrastructure, and it's an initiative and also an Eclipse project that consists of services, processes, and also best practices for the, our build infrastructure and uh, how we want to help all the projects to build, test, and deploy uh, their software. And the services that we provide is first and foremost source code hosting, uh, the build infrastructure, some additional services, and also support. To give you a few stats, at the moment, last time I checked, we have 429 Eclipse projects that are active. And out of these, uh, almost 75% of them are hosted on GitHub. About 12% are hosted on GitLab. And uh, it's 13%, 14% are still on Garrett. And for people that know uh, that, uh, yeah, Noted that the numbers don't add up to the 429 Eclipse projects, if you sum it up. That's just due to some, uh, some projects are still in the process of being migrated from Garrett to GitLab or GitHub, so there are some duplicates in there. The, yeah, the infrastructure uh, overview starts with the source code. Um, as you know, or as you've seen, the, there were th three main locations. That's GitLab, which we've host uh, on on our own uh, in well, not on our own, but or uh, we host it, but it's uh, actually in, in Europe. Um, we have GitHub, and we have Garrett. And for those that don't know yet, there is a little thing in brackets called Legacy, since we target a shutdown of our Garrett instance in May 2025. So be prepared. I'll come to that later on as well. For the CI, uh, our main, main uh, CI uh, topic is our build cluster with our 250 Jenkins controllers. So these are the servers. And we have dynamic build agents that are also run on the cluster uh, that, span, uh, that are spun up dynamically and built and then are torn down again. In addition to that, uh, we also provide static build agents to projects that either uh, have them or host them, have them them themselves, or uh, that get them sponsored from a member organization. For example, most likely this. So, so by default, we we uh, provide Linux build agents, but especially in the in the, in the cloud, we also allow um, Windows machines and macOS machines. So it's either on Azure or on Mac Stadium, for example. And obviously, for projects that are hosted on GitHub, uh, they make use of GitHub Actions as well. And uh, uh, some projects in GitLab are starting to also use GitLab CI runners. So this is not publicly available yet, but we're planning to, to have this uh, in, yeah, in the beginning of next year. For the deployment, we have a, uh, our default options are download.eclipse.org. Uh, where the projects can upload their build artifacts um, via SCP and SSH. We also provide for Maven-based projects our own Nexus. That's at repo.eclipse.org. And we can also assist in setting up access to Maven Central via OSSRH. To give you a few stats about our cluster, so we have 500 or more than 500 CPU cores, 2.5 terabyte of memory. Uh, 24 terabyte of disk space, and this is distributed across 30 nodes, so 30 machines. And at any given time, we are running more than a thousand pods. And 
Um, this build cluster is shared with other services at the moment. Um, so, for example, some websites are also running on there, but the focus is on the build and uh, the fast machines are reserved for building. So, but still, there are some, there are some differences in uh, the speed of the machines, so you might experience some variation in build duration. So that's, uh, yeah, that's normal or expected. Some additional services that we are providing, uh, we can sign uh, your build artifacts, so that's jars, uh, Windows files, and macOS files, like DMGs uh, or uh, yeah, Windows install installation files. So this is, at the moment, only accessible internally, so only from within our network, and uh, therefore it's only accessible via a Jenkins instance. We, we are working on making this uh, also public publicly available, but uh, yeah, this will take some time. We can also set up for the projects uh, Sonar Cloud access uh, with which they can do uh, code scanning, uh, static analysis, and code coverage. And we can also uh, create a Docker Hub account for any containers that they want to provide or uh, publish. And yeah, one of the pillars of keeping the build green is obviously helping the projects and supporting them. And for that, we have our help desk. In uh, December of 2021, we've migrated from our old Bugzilla instance. And now, uh, yeah, since then, we have over uh, around 3,800 tickets in total. And yeah, a little bit, uh, like, yeah, more than a third of them are uh, tickets related to Relang, about 1,000. And 300 tickets are related to GitHub. 370 are related to Jenkins. And to put this into perspective, um, we have a, like on every working day of the week, we have about 8.5 8, 8 tickets in average uh, that, are, that, are, that are created. And two of them are about Relang. So there is demand for support. And uh, just to give you some, some pictures, I was actually some, put some, uh, some faces to the names that you see in the tickets you interact with. Uh, these are your uh, friendly release engineers. And uh, yeah, the team consists of Pablo Stankiewicz, Sebastian Otomat, and myself. And we operate and work in the uh, European time zone. So during European working hours, we are supporting the projects. And we also get, as, uh, get assistance from other team members from the IT team. So that's uh, team members from the security team. Uh, from the web dev team and also from our infra team that help you set up uh, the builds, set up, uh, yeah, any, or help you with any issues that you have. And to give you, uh, yeah, well, obviously we, we get some questions quite regularly and I wanted to, to mention them uh, since it might be, might be good to uh, have them presented and, and, and uh, make or uh, spread the knowledge about them. So one of the things that is probably in the top three is GitHub invitations. So we get a lot of requests about people that said, well, uh, I want to join this GitHub organization, but I can't, I don't have permissions. And most likely there is an invite already sent out to you, but in case you can, can't find it in your email inbox or in your spam folder, um, there's also a way to just log into GitHub and go to the organization you want to join, most likely there's a banner on the top saying view invitation, you click join, and then you're in. In case someone um, did really not get an invitation, then there's another case uh, of someone requesting, can I be added to a GitHub team, or can someone else, like my team member, be added to a GitHub team? And this is something that we don't do manually. We have a sync script for this, and uh, this sync script relies on our uh, project management interface, um, and that's projects.eclipse.org. So whenever such a problem exists or such a problem, uh, you have such a problem, then uh, you should check if the name of either you or your team member uh, appears in the list of uh, the committers or project leads. If that's the case, then uh, you might still need to wait until the sync script runs, and it takes about two to four hours to synchronize. Um, if the person does not come up in the list of committers, 
uh, then you might have to first elect this person as a committer. If the election is in process, then we'll have to wait until it's concluded. And if it's concluded, then there might still be a case that uh, some paperwork is missing, and we will help you, uh, nevertheless, to, to fix this and get this going. Um, for yeah, more information about build-related questions, there's also the wiki, where we discuss or where we show what uh, the, most of the common issues that, that people complain about or that people have issues with. And um, just a heads up, this wiki will be moved soon. I'll come to it uh, back later. Um, and yeah, I also want to give you some best practices because that's, again, also one of the things uh, to keep in mind to keep your builds green. First and foremost, uh, who of you does not yet use Jenkins pipelines? Everyone uses Jenkins pipelines? Or not Jenkins at all? Um, <laughs> okay, anyways, for, for those who don't know, Jenkins pipelines is the, Jenkins, uh, is the configuration as code approach to uh, store your build configuration uh, near your source code in your, in your repo. And um, yeah, there's a good introduction on the Jenkins homepage. And uh, obviously, we can help you with the migration if you want to migrate from a freestyle job to a pipeline build. Because freestyle jobs are just yeah something of the past, and everyone has moved on, uh, pretty much. And also important, uh, what we would like, what we like to recommend is uh, no concurrent builds, at least of the same job. This can lead to all kinds of different issues, uh, especially in Jenkins, and uh, yeah, it's not recommended. Also, something that should be a thing of the past is nightly builds. Is anyone here that still does nightly? Builds. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope at least the nightly builds um, are not just started automatically without uh, checking first if uh, something changed. Uh, because that's, that's coming to the next point. Um, one should not pull for changes, but we should uh, use webhooks instead. So that uh, if something changed in a repository, this should notify the build server of a change. And only then should be built. Otherwise, we're just wasting resources in most cases. There are some special cases where it might make sense to have a nightly build. I, there are some exceptions to almost everything. But in general, the advice is no nightly builds and uh, use webhooks. And if you don't have that yet, let us know and we'll help. And also, common practice as well, be resourceful with uh, the CI environment and uh, the resources, since uh, obviously all the projects share the resources that we have. And even though CPU and memory is cheap, it's not free. So it's good to I don't know, at least cons uh, consider if it's really worth running 100,000 tests just because you fixed a typo in a readme. Um, and uh, if it's really necessary to run a build every five minutes, maybe it makes sense to run it only every five, 15 minutes um, or check for changes. And yeah, something that probably a lot of you are already aware of, and that I mentioned before, um, the, we have a few migrations going on. And um, the most important one is uh, the repositories, or the, yeah, where the source code is. So as I mentioned, Garrett will be deprecated, or is deprecated. And uh, we, we recommend for all the projects to actively move to either GitHub or GitLab. At some point, we will ask you a bit more forcefully uh, to do the migration and to decide where you want to go to or where you want to move. And, but yeah, it should be mostly transparent and um, the, yeah, there should be no bigger issues with moving to either GitHub or GitLab. Second part is usually the issues, since also our Bugzilla instance is deprecated. And um, it has some, some more time left, but still, uh, it's something that is heavily outdated, and we want to shut down eventually. And so there are tools for that. There's a, a tool that we were able to uh, customize and, and custom tailor to our needs that does the migration from Bugzilla to GitLab. And there's also another tool that, we, that is at least available, but we haven't tested it or we haven't used it yet, that does the same for Bugzilla to GitHub. 
The good thing about GitLab is that the API supports backdating and, and uh, kind of changing the author of comments and uh, descriptions or issues. And so that allows to have a really uh, seamless uh, move over to, to GitLab. So what we recommend in general is only moving open to issues. But then if the issue appears in GitLab uh, and it was opened nine years ago, then it's still nine years ago in GitLab. It's not um, just open today, and uh, the owner is set correctly if the GitLab user has logged in at least once. For GitHub, unfortunately, they don't support that, and so, um, yeah, it's, you should consider it twice if you really want to uh, migrate the issues to GitHub because you lose a lot of information in terms of the date and also of the author. It's, you can still put it in um, the issue manually, but yeah, you'll lose some context and some uh, info. And last but not least, the migration, which I mentioned briefly before, uh, of the wiki. We're, we will also uh, shut down the wiki eventually, and for that, um, projects should move their, their documentation that they have in the wiki to either GitLab or GitHub as well. Or in some cases, it might make sense to also have it on a project website instead depending on their process. Yes? Um, is there any recommendation So the question was, just to repeat it for the stream, um, is there uh, any technical recommendation how this should be done from MediaWiki and to which format? Uh, we have done a few tests, and there's a, there's a GitLab issue about it that uh, refers to it, how this can be done. Um, and uh, as far as I'm aware, at least in GitHub, uh, the markdown can be just put in, um, so that, that works. Um, but I know that there are some, some issues with, I think, images, and uh, so they, they won't, for example, be transferred directly. So it's, there's no, uh, yeah. One-stop solution, uh, it depends a bit on your use case, um, but we've already gathered some, some feedback, and um, uh, if you ask me later, I can point you to some, some uh, documentation. So yeah, there, there is some, someone who did this before and there is some documentation available, so it should work. All right, what else is new? Uh, for those of you that have attended the tutorial, the security tutorial on Tuesday, um, you might already know. For those who don't know, we recommend, hi highly recommend the use of two-factor authentication. And at least in the case of GitHub, that's something that GitHub is making mandatory anyways. So Probably some of you have already received an email that says, please activate 2FA if you haven't. Um, but yeah, we, will, uh, we, recommend this, we recommend this as well, and uh, we'll try to, or we also recommend to enforce this for your GitHub organization. Uh, same thing with GitLab, uh, that should be activated as well. And the overall topic of supply, supply chain security is, is important these days, and uh, we try to, with the help of the security team, we help to support you there and uh, uh, make it less of, an, of a problem. And to that extent, uh, we have a tool that helps with that and uh, can uh, yeah, provide a baseline, a good baseline. And so there's a, a, um, yeah, a tool called Autodoc, which uh, allows to self-service your GitHub organizations and repos repositories. Uh, it's also working on the kind of configuration as code approach. So uh, you store the configuration of your uh, GitHub repos and orgs inside of uh, a repo in GitHub, and you can provide pull requests to change them. Uh, you can actually also s see for the first time what the settings are, and we have a, s have a set of default settings. Um, at some point, we would like to recommend and even maybe enforce some of the more important ones, 
let's say, Dependabot uh, or security scans and so on, uh, which should definitely be activated. And um, in order to uh, use Autodoc, there's one requirement. Uh, your project should uh, move to a dedicated GitHub organization if it hasn't done so yet. Uh, so just in order to have some form of isolation and not uh, yeah, have different settings uh, for project projects that share an organization. So uh, what actually happens is you will be moved to a different um, organization. And the good thing is in, in GitHub, the, the move is transparent. So all your old links still work. Also, the links to, to your repositories still work. But nevertheless, you should adopt your local configuration, your GitHub, uh, your URLs to GitHub, and so on. And yeah, if you haven't done so, we recommend to do this. Uh, we, we actively talk to projects as well. But um, yeah, please open a ticket, and we can help you with, with doing that. The Outlook, uh, I've talked about the, uh, the migrations before. We want to finish them soon uh, because it's obviously, obviously it's something that is a bit annoying to everyone, but we want to get rid of some old stuff to have uh, time and uh, yeah, the resources to, to take care of new, new things and better things to put some value uh, or to have more value for you. And Obviously, as release engineers, we also want to automate pretty much everything. Um, we want to automate our internal processes, our uh, relaying processes, but also uh, yeah, something that is public, publicly facing as well to, to make this easier. Um, and I mean, I've mentioned the GitLab CI runners before as well. We want to roll them out next year, uh, so this should uh, yeah, be coming soon. Uh, we also want to add more monitoring, and uh, in the best case scenario, this is also not only something internally for us, but also um, public, publicly available to a certain extent to, to you. And last but not least, we want to reduce our technical debt. So that's also part of the, the migrations um, uh, yeah, to kill anything that is heavily outdated. So yeah, to sum this up, how do we keep the build green? As mentioned, the infrastructure that we provide, that we maintain for you. Uh, for, exa for example, in case of Jenkins, this is fully managed for you. Um, we aim or target to upgrade the Jenkins instances at least four times a year to the latest LTS. Uh, we provide or we deal with the plugin updates. And um, the second part is support. As I mentioned, the, the relink support that we offer and the third one is best practices that we gather from the community. What worked for one project might work also for another project, um, or could it, would be a good example, show this to someone else, and um, yeah, define some best practices, as mentioned. And with that, we come to questions and hopefully some answers. Yes, please. So just repeating the question uh, about the Bugzilla migration or deprecation, uh, do we have some kind of archive? Uh, will there be some kind of archive? Uh, yes. So what we are planning is to have kind of a static website where all the links and all the issues still appear. The only thing that we have no solution yet, we're thinking about it, uh, is search. So the original Bugzilla search won't work. But uh, for example, we could put in uh, something like a Google search. just. Uh, to, to query the static content. Yes? You mentioned that uh, you're offering on our cloud services for some service. Are you offering other services like a dashboard? Or OK. Uh, so yeah, uh, repeating the question again, um, what are the cloud offerings that we have? Uh, so the cloud offerings are actually the machines. So that's mostly uh, either a Linux machine, a dedicated static agent, um, or uh, Mac OS or Windows machines. So that's the. Sonic. Sorry? Sonic oh, for the Sonic Cloud? So, no, for the Sonic Cloud, that's, that's just the, the access uh, that your project uh, we will set this up for you, the account. And um, yeah, all the members of your GitHub team um, can access the setting or can access the dashboard. And uh, we can also give you admin 
permissions if necessary to to uh, yeah adjust all the settings you need. Yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, will the the signing service be open to the public? Will it be a public signing service or only available to Eclipse uh, projects? Um, so the plan is to make it accessible to Eclipse projects. That's that's the plan. It should not be, uh, or we're not planning to make it public for everyone. Um, but yeah, accessible to, for example, GitHub Actions from the outside, or um, also uh, yeah. Well, it will it will be easier for GitLab, but at least for GitHub, that's something that would be required. Yes. Um, so yeah, the, the question was uh, if there's a, a recommendation or a preference between GitHub Actions and Jenkins. Um, so um, uh, it usually the best answer is depends. It depends on, on what the project needs and what it, uh, what it does. Uh, we have some projects uh, that do both. So for some uh, fast feedback, we, uh, they, they run GitHub Actions and um, on, on pull requests, but for, for example, for release builds that need to be signed, they use Jenkins. And uh, so, yeah, there's a mix, either mix or some, uh, yeah, some good reasons or not so good reasons to use either of them. Yes? Exactly. So yeah, that's another reason accessing the storage uh, is only possible from from uh, from within our network as well. So yeah. Um, we have no immediate plans, but uh, something that we should at least consider, and it also depends on demand, right? If if many projects want to do that, then uh, obviously the priority rises up. Yeah, okay, so evil thoughts um, uh, about uh, the people that could reserve some, some uh, organizations in, in, Git, uh, in GitHub um, and how, to, how we deal with this. Um, it's a good, good point. Um, we haven't done so. Um, in the beginning, we only or we used to create organizations without this Eclipse prefix, um, but then found out, yeah, obviously, some, some names are already taken. Uh, if there's a good, uh, or if we can make a a case of uh, a trademark violation, then we can actually ask GitHub to um, get that name for us. Um, but uh, yeah, in general, this would be something that could make sense. Uh, obviously, we can only do this for the projects that are already exist, not for any future ones. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible, for example, to reserve everything that is prefixed with Eclipse. Um, but yeah, valid point. But uh, we should do that. Yes. Sorry, I get the, didn't get the last part. Sorry. Um, okay. You mean for the self-service tool in GitHub?
Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's about uh, if it could be automated uh, or how it could be automated to uh, either add or remove uh, committers in the PMI. Um, so, yeah, that's, I guess, uh, something of a feature request for our EMO team uh, or web devs. And, um, uh, yeah, in general, this, this uh, in case of election and also in case of the termination uh, of, of a, let's say, or removal of a person, this goes to some more... Uh, formal process at the moment, um, and usually via a, a ticket in, in GitLab. Um, but yeah, I, I can see your point. Uh, please open the feature request. <laughs> yes. Okay, so yeah, this was about a ticket about test containers. Um, yeah, we can talk about it later. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's obviously, it also uh, always depends on, for some, some new features, it always depends on uh, the demand uh, of, if it's demanded by, demanded by many projects, then the priority raises up. If it's only one uh, project, then it's always a bit hard to distinguish. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, so is it, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> is there another way of discussing this with other people? Uh, yes, um, so the good thing, or a good, good uh, starting point is always a discussion on a mailing list, for example, on cross projects, because many projects should uh, read about this and, and uh, should get to know it. Um, there's also the CBI mailing list, which could be equally good. Uh, but yeah, if you can gather uh, more feedback or trigger a discussion and find more people that support your cause, then, uh, yeah, this could, could help as well. Readable via what? Sorry? Ah, okay, okay, I see. News groups. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, the question was if uh, the mailing list could somehow uh, interface with uh, gmain.io. Uh, um, I'm not the mailing list expert, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, again, this would be something like a feature request on a help desk, and uh, we can look into it. And, uh, yeah. Any other questions? No other questions. Okay. Uh, one last thing, just like an Apple talk. Um, I want to promote uh, the talk of my colleague, Sebastian, sits in the back, and uh, it's at 3.30 uh, today at, I think, this place, uh, about our chat service. And uh, yeah, if, if you don't know about chat service yet, please attend to talk. If you know about chat service but want to know more, also attend to talk. And um, yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you.